Hi guys. So <clears throat> I'm not really a type to have a lot of um, keepsakes. I have a couple things and I don't really hold any attachment to anything. In fact, I'd rather not have much of anything. But there are a few things that have just kind of stuck with me through many years and I never really knew why I kept certain things. But it's, it's funny how, how life has a way of working out sometimes. So there's this thing that I made in um, 1991, <laughs> this cute little goose. So um, I made this actually at a place um, here in Idaho, but it's in a different town. It was in a different town called Pocatello. Um, the place that I made it was called Aspen Crest. So I, I kind of won this ticket to this place called Aspen Crest because I, um, I had stayed out all night with my friends and we went and partied with, with these people that I had never met before. And um, when I got home, when my mom found me, however that worked out, um, she was pretty upset. Like she was really rightfully upset with me. And um, we got home and she made a phone call. And the next thing I knew I was, I was taking a trip that I didn't think I was going to be taking. And um, yeah, I was there for like four months. Um, and you know, they have a, they, back then, I mean, 1991, they had a lot of already advancement in technology because like I fell in this criteria for this certain test called a brain mapping and um it's like a sleep deprived brain mapping where you have to like stay up for over over 24 hours and then you like get all this goopy stuff and all these electrodes put in your on your head and then you stare at this screen that's flashing crazy lights and pictures and whatever at you for like two hours and you have to hold still it was a horrible but it sure helped them figure a lot out about you know like what was going on inside my head and stuff so but you know it was kind of helpful because my head like when I was younger I used to get these horrible migraines like imagine um I would say like brain freeze only in all your blood vessels in your head, not just the one. And those headaches were so severe that, um, like, there wasn't anything that could help them. And my mom took me to the doctor, and they said that it was some kind of a hormone imbalance. You know, looking back on the symptoms that I had, it, um, most people would rush someone to the hospital for stroke. Um so I lost, lost the ability to talk because half of my face was numb and um, my, I don't remember, I think it was my right side of my hand, might have been left, I don't remember, um, one side of my body would go numb and like I would get like strobe flashing and stuff and they were like, oh, that's just a migraine. Well, uh, no, <laughs> no, it, wasn't, it was not just a migraine. So um, yeah, so like they really didn't have anything for that back then I just had to kind of go through it but sometimes they would last for three days it was pretty miserable I'm so glad I don't have those anymore it was it was pretty excruciating I really feel for anybody else that suffers with that kind of stuff um but yeah so you know I just thought I would share those those things I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple of things but um you know it's an interesting time that we live in for sure. And there's a lot of interest, interesting perspectives that um, seem like they might contradict each other. And, um, you know, there's, there's a, there's a lot that I still wonder about and I don't know how to ask the right questions, you know, like if you're, if you're living in a place where, like the emotional space that you live in where you know that you've had a life that's quite different and um, and you think quite differently than other people and trying to connect with those folks. Um, 
I don't know. It, it can be a challenge, you know. I, I can only imagine how how my father felt, especially if there was like double scripts running all the time. You know, it would be really tough, especially if you really cared about folks. You know. Anyway, so I just thought I'd share that that story with you. It was one of those stories that my parents used to tell um, a lot. One of those embarrassing family story type things where. My dad would tell it like any time somebody new came into the into our little circle of people or whatever, and I was like, enough already. Ugh. But yeah, I, I felt like, you know, four months was kind of harsh, but, um, you know, they, they, they definitely helped me out with some medications while I was in there. Um, I had like uh, Haldol, I don't remember what the milligrams were, and Cogentin and Sermontal. That one was like 75 milligrams and lithium and Prozac, uh, yeah, and then, like, shortly after, shortly after, like, a month or two, I got, got, got to go home, um, another doctor was like, wait, it's kind of, like, not cool for you to be taking all this stuff, you know, especially if you're not in a full-time institution, so, yeah, I don't know what happened there, I think they made it just, like, just probably made a mistake or something, you know, so, anyway, Technology is fabulous when it works right. When it doesn't, it, it's interesting to see what happens there too sometimes. Huh? I love you guys. I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye.